These cameras here are two quite recent uh, camera thrifting finds. One is this Canon T70, which is in quite good condition. The other one is a Minolta SR1S in a little bit more rough condition. So I thought uh, this could be a good opportunity to show what you should watch out for when thrifting for 35mm SLRs. Now this uh, Minolta is a completely mechanical camera. It was made in the late 60s. There are no electronics in these models. Other Minolta models do have electronics, but this one does not seem to have it. The first thing I could check on its older mechanical cameras is the mirror foam. So I move the lens and check this here. So in front of the mirror, on the top of the camera, there is usually a mirror like bumper foam and this deteriorate usually and become like a black goo. And the reason it's important to begin here is because if you start like checking the shutter and mirror if, it, if they work, is that it can splatter this uh, like foam, it turns into goo so it can splatter onto the mirror and it can damage the focusing screen. So one, let's say a horror example, maybe not horror example, but what can happen is on this uh, uh, Konica Auto Reflex. Maybe it's not so much visible here, but on this one it has splattered quite a lot onto the mirror and the focus screen has been damaged. As you can see, there are some lighter spots. So to avoid this for happening, I usually check this first before I start like checking the shutter or anything. Now here they are like um, starting, it has become bad already, but it's not falling into pieces. So it will not risk like flying onto the mirror here. And it's much easier to replace when it's a little bit more intact, yeah. I will leave it as it is now and replace it later. And then, well, it's good to check inside the camera uh, at the other mirror, not mirror, the other like foam seals, light seals. And the light seals are like dried out here as well, they need to be replaced, but they will not splatter around, so that's good. And then, of course, it's good to have a look at the shutter to see the condition of it, if it's like in place or falling apart. And it seems to be fine so far. So there's some kind of spot here on the on the shutter. It seems to be like a cloth, like te a textile shutter. So hope it's not mold or anything like that. But I would not touch this, so yeah, be careful with that. So then, well, does the shutter work? can check. And I can put it on in like the 60, so it's the well normal speed. It works without any problem, it seems. And then I like to check on bulb because then it gets a bit more. I can keep it open and check a bit more closer what it looks like on the inside. Of course, it's quite dark inside the camera. And then, well, the mechanics of the camera. The shutter speeds usually don't stay accurate on the mechanical cameras, so but I don't have the equipment to check it either. But you can sort of get a feeling for it. Again, I will open it to better show off the shutter. If you go through every speed, you can check that they work properly. Uh, half a second. One fourth. Eight. And so on. I mean, I already checked this, so I know that they work. Of course, I can show the fastest shutter speed, 1000. So mechanically, this seems quite good. This shutter ring seems smooth enough. It doesn't seem to have become like stiff or anything in any place, except for the self timer. One thing that you should be careful to not touch is the self timer of these old cameras especially if they have not been serviced. I already know it's in a bad condition, this one, so I can show what might happen if there's a problem. Yeah, it gets stuck here, doesn't finish this, the sequence. So if I carefully push it forward, it, it will eventually reach there, but yeah. Usually it's a good idea to not touch the self timers on old mechanical cameras. I already went through this because someone had wound it all the way on this camera. So it was like wound up and stuck already. The mechanical cameras like preferably should also be serviced internally. Like the mechanics should be lubricated. 
on the old uh, lubrication removed but this is not something you should do yourself unless you know what you're doing because the amount of lubrication is very specific in very specific places and it's a very small amount so yeah and after checking the mechanics and light seals and so on of course check the viewfinder is there like mold or anything in the viewfinder this one seems quite clear it does look clean enough but there seems to be some i don't know mold spots or something on it so yeah but then again be very careful about not touching the focus screen because they are very easily damaged and lastly well the cosmetic condition there's a lot of wear of something up here and underside also but it's not a big deal i mean it affects the resale value of course if it was in pristine condition you could sell it for more but yeah if you're gonna use it it doesn't really matter and then one last thing this camera does have a smell of like basement or garage or something so it does give an idea of what uh, of how the camera has been stored so a basement smell is actually not a good thing because yeah there's more risk of mold and and other damage then uh, the lens it also looks to be in a very cosmetically bad condition yeah it's not very good looking but then again it is a soligor 135 millimeter 2.8 so it's not a very valuable lens or anything actually it's 105 millimeter not 135 yeah it's actually quite nice and compact though so i hope it's not ruined i will try to clean it off it looks like the whole front element is moldy but it might just be on the outside mm, this stuff seems to come off to my surprise really this cleaned off quite well it is clear actually the glass so this lens might not be ruined and i also see that it has some lens coatings maybe this will even end up being a quite interesting lens and clean off some external dirt it's still a bit rough looking but yeah and then of course you need to check the condition of the aperture it's a little bit closed now let's see how do i okay there we go yeah seems to be some like rough points on this aperture so i don't know it will affect i don't have any minolta adapters for my fuji system so otherwise i could do some test shots with the lens yeah there you can see between the lens flares that it's there is oil on the blade so that's not good i should also try it on the camera uh-huh there we go usually they have some kind of automatic setting no this one does not it's just completely manual i will check a little bit more about this lens it seems quite interesting even though it's like a super cheap third party lens but yeah it might have some interesting results so let's continue with this uh, electronic slr so this camera has an electronically controlled shutter and the advantage of this is that they usually keep the accuracy of the shutter speeds over time this camera and this lens look quite good and since this is an electronic camera you have to have batteries to use it i will first check the batteries i already did this and on this camera there was some uh, battery corrosion usually that happens when the batteries are forgotten in they start corroding and it can become quite stuck but it's not that difficult to fix and on this camera it uh, worked quite well so that's the first thing to check like the batteries all right these are rechargeable ones but they will work just well does it turn on yes it does turn on program and the same thing with this camera check that the mirror foam has not turned into goo and here it looks very good so if i push on it it bounces right back and then inside the camera as well let's see okay there's safety lock on the latch and it has a vertical traveling metal shutter so it's a bit different than the older one of course yeah and in the inside there are many fewer uh, light seals on this uh, t70 which is a good thing not so much to change so like here are some and they also seem good they are like moving back so yeah this is a mid 80s camera so it's not that old like this late 60s minolta yeah now does it work does it fire yeah it does this when you close the back uh, for the film automatically yeah no problem these usually work without problem they are very well made they are basically computers as well so and the lens look great as well no problems there 
even though it would have been nicer if it had the new FD mount rather than the breech lock one, but well, whatever, no big deal. And to finish it off, I will also show what to check in a point and shoot. I uh, have this FF70 made by Rico, also 80s camera, electronic uh, shutter and everything, everything automatic. So if I put in the batteries, of course, here's the same thing. Check the uh, light seals. And here again, they are very good. Of course, this is a good time to change them also, since this camera is from the 80s. They will not stay this nice forever. And they're much easier to change when they are still in good condition. So they come off quite nicely. So that might be something to consider if you plan to use the camera a lot. And then, does it work? Now this camera is a bit strange. <laughs> it's like has this animation, it's like counting counting the frames down. Yeah, I need to turn it on also, <laughs> of course. And it turns off the flash, yeah. Uh, it will light up, yeah. Okay, and this works without problem also, seems to be. Of course, you can only tell for sure if any of these cameras work as they should when you get the film back, because then you can see like uh, light leaks, uh, shutter problems and other things that might appear. Right, so I think this is all for this video. A quick overview of what you can check for when buying or thrifting 35 millimeter cameras. Yeah, three different types of cameras. It isn't completely comprehensive, but yeah, if you have any more questions, you can always ask. Yeah, thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye.